Hello, welcome to some Alcane questions. Um, so this is really designed to just see how you're getting on with your vision. Make sure you don't forget it all before you come back in September. Um, so I've got f uh, a few questions for you to have a go at. They get a little bit harder. So I'll pop the questions up. Then if you have a go at them, and then once you've had a go at them, um, if you could um, carry on playing a video and you will see the answers appear. So here we go with question number one. So, we're going to write the symbol equations for the complete and incomplete combustion of octane. So, for this you need to remember what the formula of octane is. Now, octane is obviously an alkane, which goes with the general formula of CnH2n plus 2. So, octane we know is going to be C8H, uh, 2 times 18 is 16, plus 2 is going to be 18. If it's complete uh, combustion, we obviously add O2, and our products are going to be carbon dioxide and water. Now these are easy peasy to balance. All you have to do is, if you notice you've got an 8 there, so you have to have an 8 there. You've got an 18 there, so to balance the hydrogens you need a 9 there. Now, if you count up either side, you've got a total of 16 plus 9, which comes to 25, if I'm not mistaken. So that means you need 12 and a half O2. Just to finish it off, we can put uh, symbols on as well. Our octane, of course, is a liquid. You all know that because that's what you pop in your little cars. Oxygen is going to be a gas. Carbon dioxide is a gas, and at those temperatures, water's going to also be a gas. Incomplete combustion is going to be the same, except, of course, you make carbon monoxide. So we do the same, plus O2. This time we make CO plus H2O. Balancing again, you've got to have an 8 there. Uh, you're still going to have to have a 9 there, but it's the oxygens that are going to change on the left hand side. Now I've got 8 plus 9, which is going to be 17. Um, so if we do half of 17, that's going to be 8.5, like so. And again, we can put the old symbol equations, or uh, symbols on like that. Carbon monoxide we know is a gas, and again H2O is going to be a gas. You may want to consider how would the equations differ if I asked you to write the, uh, the equation for the standard enthalpy change of combustion. Which one would it be? Well, it's obviously going to be the top one, because that's the complete combustion. However, you would have to change the symbol for water because all the compounds have to be in their standard state, so water would have to be a liquid at that point. Okay, that's good. So hopefully that's all sorted. Right, let's move on to the next question. So here we go, we've got a equation, and they want us to do the mechanism, write the mechanism, and also give two other possible products, uh, other than those that they've shown. So have a go at that, and um, once you're ready, carry on with the video. So, what's the answer? Well, the name of the mechanism, you see you've got UV light up there, so it's got to be our old favourite, free radical substitution. So there we go. Now, in terms of writing a mechanism, this goes by uh, three steps. The first step is going to be your initiation. And that is taking your chlorine with your UV light, and that gives you two chlorine free radicals. And notice we put a little dot above the chlorine to show it's a free radical. You've then got your two propagation steps. And that's going to be, first of all, your chlorine free radical comes to meet ethane. That produces one of your products is going to be HCl, but also C2H5 dot 
plus HCl. And then that C2H5 dot meets another chlorine molecule to give you your other product, C2H5Cl, plus another chlorine free radical. And the final step is termination. Termination always involves two free radicals coming together. So use two that we've got, C2H5 dot plus Cl dot gives you C2H5 Cl. Now in terms of your other possible products, um, well, uh, you can obviously have multiple substitution occur, but also two of these radicals could come together as well. So one possible product would be C4H10, which is from those two of those three radicals coming together, but you could also have a multiple substitution of the chlorine, so another one could be C2 H4 Cl2. Right, so let's move on to the next field question. So this is uh, slightly more difficult. It wants me now to complete the equation. Now, you can see you've got a lovely benzene ring there. You've got bromine and UV light. Now, as you know, because you know benzene chemistry so well, uh, bromine without an iron uh, catalyst, which would in this case be FeBr3, will not react with benzene. So, what's it going to react with? Where well, it's going to react with a methyl group, isn't it? Um, so, it's quite easy for you to sort this out. Um, what's it going to do? Well, it's going to meet up with your methyl group and it will substitute. So, it will be CH2Br and your other product is going to be HBr. So, hopefully you got that. Again, this is where they're going to start messing with your heads a little bit. Uh, they're going to give you things that you, you know, you may sort of think, oh, I've never seen benzene with bromine and UV light before. No, you haven't. Um, that's because you don't need to worry about it. So look at what you do know, and you know that um, a methyl group will react with bromine under UV light. One other possible product, well, again, as we looked in the other example, you could have multiple substitution. So you could have CHBr2. Um, if you want to go crazy though, uh, you could um, actually join two of these together. So you would have a CH2 like so, another CH2 and uh, another benzene ring like so. So well done if you got this guy because he's a little bit tricky. Um, otherwise play it safe and go with multiple substitution. Uh, generally works out for you. Uh, well done if you got that right. So hopefully now you're ready for the final one. Right, so this one is a challenge, so good luck. So how do you do this? Well, you need to look really carefully at the products. Notice that the actual uh, halogen that has gone onto the propane has actually been iodine and HBr has been formed. So you need to think about how you can do your mechanism. Now, the first one, quite straightforward. We're going to start, of course, with initiation, which is fine. That's just going to be my IBr is now going to become I dot plus Br dot. Nothing too scary there. The next step is my propagation. Now, this is where uh, you have to think carefully. You're obviously going to start with C3HA. Now, the first step you are going to make as your product HBr. So the radical that you need to use is Br dot. And then that would give you C3H7 dot. Okay, now it's slightly easier. Your other product is going to be this one. So that's going to be C3H7 dot plus Ibr again. This time I'm going to make my other product C3H7. I plus Br dot and look carefully I have managed to regenerate my Br dot well wow, that's super okay the last one termination well make it nice and easy for yourself 
go for the obvious one, C3, H7 dot, plus is going to be I dot, is going to make C3, H7, I. There you go. Well done. So I hope you enjoyed the alkane questions. And uh, there'll be an alkene one coming up soon. So uh, don't spend too much time on the beach. Enjoy.